Good morning, Haven Campus Church, and welcome to another online program. I hope you're keeping well and safe, and it's hard to believe that we're, <laughs> it's already nearly two months of lockdown. But I'm excited today because this morning we have Pastor Kim speaking to us, and she will be looking at how do we align ourselves with God's master plan. There are times in life we don't always see the evidence on what God is doing and how He goes about answering prayers. But I honestly believe it's in those times we need to align ourselves with what God is doing and what He has in store for us. So I pray you enjoy it. I pray God speaks to you and I know you will be blessed. Just a reminder that it is our last Monday of our prayer group for our 30 days of prayer. And I pray that you tune in once again. And I thank you for all those who are keeping our community in your prayers. And I ask that you will continue to do so. Please keep our church, our school, and entire community in your prayers. And uh, I look forward to once again meeting you all, joining face to face. But until then, keep safe and always look after one another. So church, can't wait to see you. I pray that you're blessed. And as always, love God, love others, love yourself. And always be kind. Thank you. I've known about the uh, Science magazine since I was a kid. My parents used to send it to uh, people that they knew. When we were young, we'd arrive home and from school and it'd be the race to get to the mailbox. We'd open the mailbox up if I got there first or, or my sister and, and there would be the big envelope with Signs of the Times. One dream that I had was, wow, if I want to be a writer, like writing and working for the church for Signs of the Times would be an amazing thing. It would be a privilege and an honour. Signs has, has got a really long history um, in Australia. I think it was 1886 and so, you know, that's 130 plus years. This magazine, I would say, is the church's premier evangelistic outreach tool. It's a sharing magazine to share Jesus with our, our friends, neighbours, families, workmates. The world that we're living in now is full of hurt people and full of pain. The type of articles really speak into some of the issues that our society is actually facing at the moment. We did some research at Adventist Media and we saw that people are afraid of being too pushy. They don't want to offend their friends or family members by talking about Jesus. And we kind of go, oh, well, people have got different views and perspectives, you know, should we be, be sharing Jesus? And so signs is a really non-confronting way to share a Christian worldview. The church has you know, various magazines that you know, people consume. Um, but Signs of the Times is one that is designed specifically for the community. And I know that there are various uh, Adra op shops um, and other Adventist businesses that have signs on display. But it's also seen um, on the Spirit of Tasmania. It's seen in airports around Australia. Um, McDonald's. People are sponsoring them to go into McDonald's. The problem is it's hard to sometimes get those projects renewed and the people at the project don't want signs to stop. We receive various donations on a regular basis of people who can't get out and you know, put it in the letterboxes or can't leave it in, in different spots. But they give us a donation because they know we're distributing to places they can't go. Signs of the Times Ministry needs your help. If you make a donation this month to Signs of the Times, it'll go to a project where Signs magazines are there, ready for the public to pick them up and to read about the good news of Jesus. Look, I would encourage every Seventh-day Adventist church person to consider being involved in Signs ministry and donating. Even if you don't use it personally, there are places and projects where the Signs magazine is going out and so the story of Jesus that we see in the signs, we're spreading light everywhere. We can be confident that the message of Jesus is actually being seen in the signs magazine because he said, I am the light of the world. Signs is a simple method of sharing Jesus.
Good morning, church. We are in week three of our sermon series about prayer. And this morning I want to talk about the concept of aligning ourselves with God in prayer and also about the idea of faith, because let's face it, if we don't have faith, then prayer is pretty much just talking to ourselves, right? So we can't really have a prayer life if we don't have faith. But what is faith and how do we find faith and how do we grow our faith and how does it bring us closer to God? Before we get into it, I just want to pray. Dear God, thank you so much um, that we can be here this, uh, this morning to learn more about you. And God, I just pray that you will speak through me and that your truth will come through. In Jesus name. Amen. So when it comes to prayer, sometimes we struggle with verses like Matthew 21 verse 22. And it says, you can pray for anything. And if you have faith, you will receive it. And we read that and we think, okay, so I didn't get what I prayed for. So maybe I don't have enough faith. And somehow we've formed this view of faith as almost being like brownie points. Like if we have enough of it, then we'll get what we want. But that's not how faith works. That's not what faith is. That's why Jesus says that we only need faith the size of a mustard seed in order to move mountains. So how can that tiny bit of faith be so powerful? In 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, it says, this is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. So how do we have this confidence? When we pray according to God's will. But how can we know what God's will is? In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ. You see, this confidence comes from knowing the will of God and that knowledge comes from hearing the message through the word of Christ. Through reading our Bible, we can get to know who God is, what his character is like, and that's how we learn about what his actual will is. For example, the Bible says in Micah 6 verse 8 that we should seek justice, love mercy and walk humbly with God. So say we're dealing with a situation at work and we have to make a decision on how to handle what seems like an injustice. Now we know that it's God's will for us to seek justice, right? So we can pray for God to show us where that justice lies, who we need to speak to in order to sort this issue out. 
And it also says to love mercy. So we can ask God to help us to show mercy to the people that are involved. Maybe even the people that are causing the injustice. And in that way, we're aligning ourselves with God's will, which means that we can have the confidence in knowing with certainty that he will answer those prayers. And this is what builds our faith. But if we didn't hear that message and that instruction from the word to seek justice and love, love mercy, then we'd just be guessing really. So we wouldn't be able to come to him with that same sort of confidence. Make sense? So having faith doesn't mean acting on what God can do because God can do anything, but it's responding to what he has said that he will do. Like Peter, when he walks on the water and he sees Jesus and he's like, Jesus, tell me to come out onto the water. And so Jesus says, all right, come. And he walks out. But if, G if, if Peter had just walked out because he wanted to, I doubt he would have gotten very far. We see that as soon as he starts to doubt, he actually starts to sink. You see, we can't just copy the faith acts of, of others and expect to see the same results. If it's not what God wills for us, then it's not gonna happen the same way. You know, we, we see others, other people that get that job or move to that place or they get engaged or have a baby or they just have that breakthrough and we think, yes, that's what I need. God, please give me that. And then when we don't hear a yes, we think, okay, I just need to do the same things that they did and then it'll happen for me too. But then when it doesn't happen, we blame God or we blame life for our failure. But the real reason was that we didn't make any effort to connect with God and align ourselves with his actual will for our lives. In John chapter 15, verse seven, it says, if you remain in me, and my words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So when we are striving to abide in him and align ourselves with God's will, then we can be confident that it will be done. Now, I know that some of you are probably thinking, okay, so I need to read my Bible more, but I've tried that and I just can't get into it. I never feel like it's really speaking to me at all. I have a lot of people that come to me and they're like, how do you get into reading the Bible? I just keep opening it and nothing really jumps out and it doesn't make sense. And so I just get bored. And I think sometimes we think that just opening the Bible and just pointing to a, a random verse is how God is gonna speak to us. And sure, God can do that, and sometimes he does, but not usually. He wants us to use our brain. He doesn't want us to just be spoon fed. Now, I'm not saying that you need to know where everything is in the Bible either. Lots of people feel intimidated or overwhelmed that they don't even know where to start. And sometimes I feel like that too. But you know what I do? I Google it. <laughs> I know it doesn't sound very romantic, but stick with me. When I'm struggling with something and I really need God to speak into it, I'll Google, what does the Bible say about guilt or grief or loneliness or whatever it is that I'm going through? And then it will come up with heaps of verses and chapters in the Bible that talk about these things. And it's an awesome way to just get started. And then I start reading in those parts of the Bible and then usually God just guides me from there. And he shows me verses that speak exactly to what is going on in my life and what I'm going through. But you don't need to feel guilty or embarrassed for not knowing off the top of your head where to find those things. We're not all theologians. If God wants to use 
or needs to use Google to, to help you, he will. All he asks is that we seek him. And when you find what the word says, sometimes you're going to come across things that you're going to struggle with, things that you wrestle with or you disagree with. And please don't give up at that point. Reach out and ask somebody that, about their perspective that also studies the Bible, maybe a pastor or a friend or just anybody that you trust because you don't need to find all the answers on your own either. God can use other people to speak into you and to help you gain understanding. When it comes to prayer, Jesus instructed us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. He said, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus showed us that we need to be praying for God's will to be done. And by hearing the word and reading our Bible, it means that we actually know what that will is when we pray for it so that we can have that confidence. But as I'm sure you've heard before, it's like a muscle. The more we use it, the more practice reading and studying the Bible and coming to God in prayer, the easier it is it's going to be to hear God clearer. And when we can hear him clearer, he's able to be more specific with his guidance and his will for us as well. And the more that we practice this, the more that our own will actually begins to change. And soon we'll notice that we're desiring the things that God wants for us as well. So when we are in sync with God, that's when everything changes. I remember when I was in my first year of college and I was studying a Bachelor of Arts with a major in chaplaincy because I did not want to be a pastor. And I purposely chose not to study theology at the time. And in my head, I thought, you know, chaplaincy, I could do ministry pretty much anywhere but a church. It's perfect. And so I was also studying international development because I wanted to travel and do aid work like my parents did. And I was keeping all of my options open because even though I had followed God's leading to go to college and I'd even started going to church again at that point, I wasn't ready to surrender my will to God completely. And in my second year of college, I decided to let go of my baggage with church and to forgive. And so I chose to get baptized. And this was definitely not the beginning of my journey with God, but for me, it was a turning point. This was me making the choice to surrender my will and to really start abiding in him. So then six months later, I was at the beginning of my last year of college and I had interviews and it was recommended that I should study theology. And so the theology department called me and said that I've been recommended. And I remember being mad when they told me this. And I just thought, man, they think that I'm not good enough to be a chaplain. They would just want me to study more. And when I told one of my mentors about this, he said, no, Kim, that's, that's not what this means. They wouldn't recommend you if they didn't see potential in you as a pastor. And I was like, what? A pastor? <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> And I remember going back to my dorm room and telling one of my best friends and she just smiled at me and I was like, what? And she's like, surely you saw this coming, right? God's been nudging you in this direction this whole time. And now all he wants you to do is make a decision. And the next few weeks I wrestled hard, <laughs> but it was only through drawing as close as I could to God that I was able to hear him and be encouraged. And I read my Bible and verses like Ephesians chapter four, verse 14 to 16 stood out to me. And it says, 
then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. So that whole body is healthy, growing and full of love. And when I looked up that verse in my Bible for this sermon, I saw a note that I had written at that exact time in my last year of college, written beside it. And it said, Kim, I've been teaching you at a young age to understand truths that people much older than you haven't yet grasped. And none of your experiences have been a waste. I am preparing you to lead my church to be healthy, growing and full of love. That's what I felt like God was saying to me at the time through his word. And he wanted me to say yes to this offer to do theology and to learn more so that I would be able to discern truth better. So at that point, I said yes. And that's when everything changed. Doors opened and God led me here. And now I'm studying theology at the same time as doing what I now realize is my dream job. And I couldn't imagine doing anything else. But what I'm saying is that when we surrender our will to God and allow his will to be our own, that's when we see amazing things happen because we know that his plans are good and his power is able to accomplish more than we can ask or even imagine. Now, don't get me wrong. It also means that you're going to be stretched and pulled out of your comfort zone because he doesn't want us to stay there. There's no growth in our comfort zone, but he uses those experiences to teach us to trust him and to prove his faithfulness to us. In Romans 12, Verse two, it says, do not be conformed by the pattern of this world, as in don't let your own will and future be shaped by how the world defines success and direction, but, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This transformation comes and happens by the Holy Spirit. And through the word of God, and through relationships as well. In Romans 8 verse 6, it says, when we allow the spirit to direct our mind, it leads us to life and to peace. We can live in peace, knowing that we are making wise decisions. Peace in knowing that we are following a God that only wants the best for us and can see way more of the picture than we can. You know, when I'm really struggling and I feel like I can't stop dwelling on it, it's happened quite a few times during, during lockdown, but I'll actually speak this verse over myself. I'll just say, Spirit, take control of my mind and lead me to life and peace. And it just changes my whole perspective because sometimes we have to be in this constant surrender to hand over our will and our worries so that in our weakness, his power is made perfect. So this morning, I want to encourage you to start making time to abide in him. Pray and present your struggles to him and then allow him to speak through his word to you. Prayer is not meant to be a one-sided conversation. He wants to speak to you but we need to open our ears in order to hear it. Let's pray. Dear God, I just thank you so much that you are always with us. And so Lord, I pray that you will teach us to press into you, to draw closer to you and to look into your word and what you have already spoken to us. Lord, I thank you that you do have a plan for each and every one of us. 
and you want to lead and guide us in that direction. And so God, I pray that we can surrender our own will in order to let you lead. God, I thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.